Today we're going to be talking about power series, which is an extension of geometric series that is the previous video. So when I have a series, and notice how that was geometric, we have this expansion of our geometric series, and that's called a power series. So meaning it is a polynomial that's centered at zero. And then here we're going to have a power series that's shifted. If you think about it, it's just shift. It's just a shifting over left to right. And A is called the center, where we center things at. And that's going to make, I think, a little bit more sense tomorrow when we do an activity having to do with this. Well, let's go through a few examples. So find a power series representation of the following function. Should the first four terms in the general term also give the series, using sigma notation, give the interval of convergence. Okay, what you should recognize right away, that this is some form of a geometric series. Meaning, you remember the sum, this is the first term on the top, and then on the bottom, we have 1 minus the ratio. So our first term is 1. Our ratio is equal to negative x. So this series can be written as, now it's kind of going backwards to what we did yesterday. So writing this as a series first term multiply by the ratio multiply by the ratio again multiply by the ratio again um, what do i need i need four terms now something that's super picky they want plus dot 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 plus now the general term negative one since it's, since the ratio involves a negative it's nice to have that negative out in front um, to the n minus 1, x to the n, plus dot, dot, dot. Yes, I know it seems silly, but you kind of need this plus dot, 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 and this plus dot, dot, dot there at the end. So now writing this as an infinite series. Oh, it's going to erase that. Um, n equals 1. Basically, you have the function that you need right there. Now, finding the interval and convergence. That just means this ratio here has to range between negative 1 and 1. So that means that is going between negative 1 and 1, because I multiply by a negative 1 and flip the signs, so that's what we get. x to the n, I apologize, I missed an n here. Okay, our next example. Find a power series representation for the following function. Show that the first four terms and the general term. Again, remember that top number is your first term. You have 1 minus your ratio on the bottom. So first term multiply by your common ratio. Multiply by the common ratio again. Multiply by the common ratio again. Now I need my plus dot 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 plus my general term A1 R to the N minus 1 minus minus 1 plus dot dot dot. And College Board is super picky on the plus dot dot dot, so you need that piece in there. Now, this is an infinite series from, and you have, it's kind of nice because you have that function already. 
Now I need to find the interval of convergence. Your radius has to be between negative 1 and 1. So when I divide by 2, I'm sorry, I need to find the interval of convergence. So that's finding that. Okay, find a power series representation of this function. Okay, let's. we have to do a little bit of manipulation with this one. So 1 over 6 times by 1 over x. If you look at it like that. Now, I did need to get 1 minus my ratio. So if you look at it like this, Isn't that going to be one? Isn't wouldn't that simplify to what your ratio would need to be? So I have one minus my ratio. So I know that my first term is one sixth, and my ratio is a negative x minus one. So I have one sixth multiplied by your common ratio. Multiply by the common ratio again. Multiply by the common ratio again. Oh, I'm going to run out of space. Plus dot 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 plus. Now I need my nth term, one sixth. Let's put the negative one out in front. Why you didn't like that? One six times by x minus one to the n, and then plus dot dot dot. I ran out of room. That's really not good of me. Okay, now to find the radius, negative one. If I divide by negative one, I have to switch the signs. I'm going to write it like this because that just drives me up a wall. I'm sorry. I add one to both sides. Notice a few th differences in this one compared to this one and this one. Notice how I wasn't adding anything in here. So my center was zero. Versus here and What's the center, what's the numbers that's halfway in between negative 1 and 1? Well, that's 0. Now here, same thing. Notice how I wasn't adding or subtracting anything, so my center is 0. What's halfway in between those? Between negative 1 half and 1 half? 0. Now lastly here, goes back to that center. My center here is 1 because I'm x minus a, so that's x minus 1. What's halfway in between 0 and 2? That's 1. Okay, now we can do a whole lot of algebra with, or I should say calculus, I should say, um, with these series. So use the series and the function f of x that it represents to find a power series for f of x. So, for f prime of x, I'm sorry, f prime of x. So, I did this example earlier, so remember that f of x, I did this in my 10.1 day 1 video, um, negative 10 over x plus 1. Little different simplification from what I have in the video, I just multiplied by negative 1 and 1. And remember that equals the expanded version of this series.
Now, if I need to find the derivative of this, I just take the derivative of everything. So f prime of x is equal to taking the derivative of that. If you need to do a little bit more work, I'm cheating and looking at my notes, but I've done it at least three or four times, so I know I'm correct. Hope I copied it correct. I did. Um, derivative of 5 is 0. Derivative of this first term is 5 halves. Derivative of the next term is 5x plus 3 over 2. Because I bring down the 2, multiply it to the 5, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside. Just remember, don't forget to be taking the derivative of the inside. Now, if I had the next term in here, it would be 5x plus 3 over 2 to the third. So take the 5 down, take the 3 down, multiply it to the 5, take the derivative of the inside, reduce your exponent by 1. Now my nth term is 5 times n, because I bring down my exponent. to the n minus 1, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside, and that becomes 2. Now just make sure that this makes sense. Oh, I forgot my plus dot dot dot. <clears throat> now make sure that this makes sense. If you plug in n equals 0 to this thing, you should get that first term. If you plug in n equals 1, you should, pl you should get the next term, and so on and so on. Okay, this one. This one's the beastly one. I had to do this one, I'm not going to lie. A couple times. I kept screwing it up. Okay. But I think that makes me a better teacher on this one. Remember? Find a power series. So that center of that series. So the center of that series. The interval, if you remember back to the first video... Our interval of convergence was this. So that means our center of convergence is negative 3. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to integrate from negative 3 to A. I'm sorry, negative 3 to X. The function, and it's the same function that we have, there's a reason that I did that. And this equals the integral of this series this piece of this series. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically copy that over into this slide from negative 3 to x of 5 plus 5 times t plus 3 over 2. I'm just making sure that I'm writing this out correctly, so I'm sorry you're going to have to deal with me. Well, actually, no, because now I'm talking about other things. That's a 3. I'm going to continue it down here because I need something for my nth term. Okay. Whew. Okay, let's go through and integrate this. So integrating the left side. Integrating the left side, we get negative 10 ln of t plus 1 evaluated from negative 3 to x. 
And then integrating the right side, we have 5t plus 5t plus 3 over 2 squared. Now, on this right side, each one of these is going to be a version of a u substitution. You might want to do the u substitution with this one the first time just to know what the pattern is. I'm not going to lie, I have it in my notes, but in my notes I did the u substitution over to the other side, over on the other side just to make sure I was doing it correctly. And notice how I'm not reducing some of these fractions. Oh, I ran out of room again. Now my nth term, these tens are coming from the u substitution inside there just so you realize that. And I know I just said that. I just wanted to make sure I highlighted that. And I'm going to go from negative 3 to x. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this on another slide. I have it all set up because I knew I would take I knew it would take me a while. Um, so I'm evaluating that from x to negative 3, so I have negative 10 ln of x minus 1, plus 1, I apologize, plus 10 ln of 2, plus 5x equals, I'm sorry, equals 5x plus 5 x plus 2 over 2 squared plus 5 plus 10 over 3 x plus 3 this should be a 3 over 2 to the third plus ten fourths x plus three over two to the fourth plus dot 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 plus my nth term evaluated at x so that is ten over n minus one n plus one Marnell get it together x plus 3 over 2 to the n plus 1. So that's evaluating at x. Then remember, I need to subtract. When I plug in negative 3, when I plug in negative 3, plug in negative 3, all of these terms, this term, this term, this term, all those terms go to 0, all except this one. So I have a minus a negative 15. Okay, now doing a little bit of algebra with this. Um, we can write this as negative 10 ln, I always do that, I don't know why I always do that, of x plus 1. I am not doing good today. I apologize. x plus 1 over 2 equals, I'm going to move the 15 out in front, And I'm just recapping all this over. Now, 
Now, if I bring this negative 1 inside, that basically flips everything. So I have 10 ln of 2 over x plus 1. So this function right here can now be approximated by this crazy polynomial, which technically is a sum. I hate that it does that. Sorry, anger. Of all of my terms of my nth term, basically. So 10 over n plus 1 times by x plus 3 over 2 to the n plus 1. Now I know this is a really long video. That was kind of some crazy integration. Trust me, first time I did this, I screwed it up like two or three times. So I just want to show you guys that if you plugged in n equals 0 to this, you're going to get this craziness is your first term. So if I plug in n equals 0, I have 10 over 1 equal, or I'm sorry, times by x plus 3 over 2 to the first power. So that's like saying 10 times x plus 3 over 2, that turns into 5x plus 15, which is technically, that is my first term. I know 15 is technically really the first term, um, but because of the 15 back here, that was the first term um, when I plugged in negative 3, and that's the first term of that one. That's why it's 15 plus 5x. I know that was a long video, um, but I hope you got something out of it.